So, I don't know whether they had that already, but this is where we start off. Okay. So this is the cortex of the ovary, and this is the medulla. Okay. You obviously can see that this is much larger, much larger of a follicle than these are. So if you can see in the little ones, you see nuclei, then they're either primordial follicles or primary follicles. If you see no nuclei, then you would call them atretic follicles, A-T-R-E-T-I-C, atretic follicles, okay? Right here, these are ogonia, just like in the seminiferous um, vesicles. The stem cells tend to be very, very close to the cortex, and they're very, very small, okay? So those are the oogonia. And the tunica albuginea with uh, epithelial layer is right here. Okay, so this is part of the ovarian cortex, or you can just say ovary is fine. These don't have any um, nuclei in there, so these are atretic follicles. This is after the corpus albicans, right? It's falling, it's starting to deteriorate. And how you, you can actually see, this is a nucleolus of a primary ovocyte, and so this is um, a primary follicle. And it, you just see a few follicular cells around it, okay? This one, here is the oocyte here, and the follicular cells around it, and this is in the ovary in the cortex. One second, one second. This is, okay, I, I wanted to make sure, because I wanted to make sure that we would knew that this is the antrum right here, so this is a secondary follicle, okay, but the antrum hasn't gotten big enough, so it's not a mature follicle yet, okay? See the zona pellucida, and this will be the corona radiata later on, okay? It's not quite there yet. Oh, suddenly there's a model. Okay, so this is the cortex, this is the medulla, okay? You can see that this is um, the corpus hemorrhagicum after the ovulation, this is right during ovulation, this is the huge antrum, I mean there really should be more granulosa cells. This is the secondary oocyte, oh there's the corona radiata right there, and that's the process of ovulation right there. This is corpus gluteum because it's yellow, this is corpus albicans because it's white. And these are primary follicles with primary oocytes inside. This is a primary oocyte, but you see that line there, I think it's starting to form an antrum barely, so then this would be a secondary follicle primordial follicles. Okay, so let me go back to here. Very important that you know this. This is a mature follicle. The antrum is quite large. Okay, so this is a secondary oocyte right here. This is the zona pellucida. This is the corona radiata. Okay, this is the antrum. This is going to be the theca on the outside. Let me just make sure if there's anything I'm missing. Yeah. And because this is the secondary oocyte, right, it's undergone meiosis one, so it's 23-23, right, two sets of 23 in one cell, okay? Okay, this is the ovary, this is the epithelial layer, okay? Simple layer, that means simple, cuboidal epithelial layer. Okay, this is a corpus luteum just starting to form. Now, if I were you, when you go home, take a yellow highlighter. So this is slide number six. Make sure you make that yellow. Okay, and during the test, I'm gonna go, oh, look, I think it looks yellow. Mm -hmm. All right, this is not the greatest slide. It's got a lot of dirt on here. But can you see how the edge is not really clear anymore? It's starting to like fall apart. See, there's a nice corpus luteum here. This is the corpus albicans. It's starting to fall apart. Okay. Here is the corpus albicans again. You really can't see the edge. This is corpus um, luteum. Yes, corpus albicans starting to fall apart. Okay. This is an atretic follicle. It's starting to basically break down completely. You can stop there. So this is the fallopian tube. This is the lumen right here. These are the mucosal folds, okay, and the 
goblet cells, which produce mucus. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is the muscularis over here, helping produce peristalsis. Okay. Um, remember, this is the endometrium, the myometrium, and the perimetrium. The endometrium is just what's really big when um, you're preparing to catch the embryo, and then if you don't get impregnated, then this part of the endometrium falls off, and you'll see tissue, and then you see blood, and that's menstruation. Until the next month, when it starts to get bigger and bigger again. Okay. So, this is actually upside down. It's an electronic microscopic um, picture, and this is the lumen here. I mean, it says LU, but it was backwards and upside down. So this is the lumen. Those are some blood vessels there. But what you have is the endometrium here, and then the thick part would be the myometrium, and then the perimetrium here, and the serosa would be out here. Okay. All right. So basically, what you have here is the um, uterus. This is the endometrium, and you have two layers. They're called strata. You have stratum basalis and the stratum functionalis. The stratum basalis never goes away. It's set. So this is the uterus. Histology continues. Um, the lumen is over here, and the endometrium is this entire thing. You see it's got some glands here. And the myometrium more is more here. This is the endometrium that will either, the functional part will fall off, um, and that will be during menstruation. So when a woman menstruates, the first thing she sees is not blood, but tissue. Okay. All right. So basically, this is the uterus, this is the opposite direction, so the lumen is over here, and you can see the whole endometrium with a lot, a lot of uterine glands in here, and there's also blood vessels in there as well. But these, these parts are, are the glands. Okay, this is the secretory stage, versus here, this proliferative stage, which that means that the cells are proliferating, they're making more, so you get bigger, bigger endometrium, and now it's gonna start to secrete stuff. That's why it's the secretory stage. Okay, this is the uterus with the menstrual. Obviously, you can see the blood here, and um, you have there are fewer glands here, and you're starting to see the blood in this stage. That's the key, and the lumen is all the way on the right hand side. Okay, so the cervical canal. This is where the cervix is here. They check for cervical cancer. Okay, so this is the cervical canal, and the lining is over here. Okay, and you have clefts. Clefts are like hidden areas, so the kind of the dipped in areas are the long branching clefts. If you just call it a cleft, it's good enough. Okay, and this would be the, the whole lumen area right there. Okay, so right here is the vagina. Um, it's really stratified a lot because when a man inserts inside a woman, um, you have uh, a lot of friction, so you're going to have a lot of squamous cells being ripped off, and that's why you have to have that. Okay. So right here is the vagina, and this is the stratified squamous epithelium, and the lumen is all the way over there. Okay. These are mammary glands. Just look at it. Look, look, look. She has the hand. Okay. So basically, here's the mammary gland. Um, with pregnancy. So here are the spaces. Again, they're called alveoli, and they're lined with simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay, and this is the connective tissue here. Okay, and this is mammary gland with a woman who's lactating, and the alveoli are much larger because they're filled with milk. Okay, and this is the umbilical cord. You have two umbilical arteries. One second, just to make sure. These are the two umbilical arteries, and that's the umbilical vein. Okay. This is the placenta. This is the villi. Um, the villi are going like this. They're very long, kind of like bumpy things. And you have the connective tissue is inside. And this is where the mothers and the blood and the baby's blood like to mix nutrients, but they don't actually mix themselves, okay? We went over this a thousand times. This is the corpus luteum. Make sure it looks yellow, highlight it. Corpus albicans, that's white, okay? Albicans white, got them done, okay? Um, I think you need to go over this, so look this stuff up for homework, okay? I think there's a place in it, you have to define them.